Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to find the first and last days of this year, next year, and the previous year in Microsoft Access. And by this year, I mean any year. Give it a date, it'll give you the first and last days of that year. Before we get started, some prerequisites. You should know what calculated query fields are. You should know how to use the date serial function. This is important, and if not, go watch this video. It's on my YouTube channel, it's on my website, it's free. It'll show you how the date serial function works. You should know how to use the year, month, and day functions, especially the year function, since in this video we're going to be figuring out the first day of the year. So go watch this. And one more, you should know how date math works, right? You add one to a date and it goes up one day. Okay, so watch that video too if you're not sure how that works. All of these are free. Go watch them now and then come on back. We'll talk about the year thing. Okay, so here I am in my tech help free template. You can grab a copy of this off my website if you want. So you can find links to all this stuff down below in the description below the video window, but you can use any database you want. We're just gonna be making a query. Now, I got customers in my database and each of them has a customer sense field, how long they've been a customer. We're gonna use that date as our guinea pig date and figure out what the first day and the last day of that year are, right? Are, yeah, okay, are, or were, were, I guess, unless it's the current date, then it'd be in the future, so you'd say it will be. Anyways, let's go make a query. So we're gonna create query design. I'm gonna bring in that customer table, close that guy. All right, let's just bring down the customer sense. Now, I don't wanna keep typing customer sense in all my calculated fields. So we're gonna alias this guy. I'm gonna put a D colon in front of that. What does that do? Well, that turns customer sense into just D. That's called an alias. Okay, really easy to do. Here, I'll zoom in so you can see it better. Shift F2, there you go. There's customer sense, it's now called D. And if I run this now, that's just D. That's the name of that column or that field, right? Access uses fields, Excel uses columns. Okay, now, next up, right here. I wanna find the first day of whatever year that falls in, that date, all right? Now, I already have these on my notepad, so I'm just gonna copy and paste them instead of making you watch me type, so paste, there it is. Let me zoom in and I'll explain it to you. So we're gonna make a new field called first day year, all right, first day of the year. It's gonna be date serial. Now, if you watch a date serial video, you know date serial takes three numbers. It takes the year, right? So it'd be like 2022, for example, then the month, then the day. So we want the year of whatever D is year is, right? So if that falls in 1990, it's gonna give it 1990 there, right? The year of D. Then we want the first day, so it's always gonna be January 1st. Okay, hit okay. Let's run the query, and there you go. There's the first day of each of those years, right? 1999, January 1st, 1995, January 1st, and so on. Now, unlike months, which are tricky because the last day can fall on a variety of different days, the end of the year is always December 31st. So that makes this nice and easy for us, right? So last day of the year is going to be, I'll paste it in again, Control-V, paste, and I'll zoom in for you so you can see it. Same thing, last day of the year. Date serial, always the same D, right? And then 1231. Years are nice and simple. And then we run it, and there's the last day of that year. Piece of cake, right? Now, for the previous year, it's nice and simple also. Paste it in. We just subtract one from the year. That's all. There's no tricks we have to play. Hit OK. Run it. There's the first day of the previous year. So this guy falls in 1990. There's the first day of the previous year, January 1st, 1989. And then we'll do the same thing with the last day. Let me grab that off my notepad here. Copy, paste it in, run it, and there we go. 1231, same as this one, All right? Super simple. I'll let you see it. All right, there you go. All right, year of D minus one. And yeah, sometimes access throws the little brackets in there for you. You don't need them with a simple name like that. And remember, we don't use spaces in our field names. That's no, no. Watch my Access Beginner 1 class for my reasons why. Okay. Let me resize this so we got some room down here. Shrink you guys up. All right, we got two more. We got the next year. And that's just simply adding one to the year. Same thing we did before. 
Just adding one to it, right? Let's take a look. See? D plus one. And then the last day of the following year. Right there. Right? Add one, 1231. Run it. There you go. And if for any reason you don't want the date in the table, you want the actual current date, well, you can come down here and replace customer sense with date. Now, be careful, because if you just put in date here, look at that. It's in square brackets. Anything in square brackets, Access tries to treat as a field. So if I run that now, it's going to give me that enter parameter value thingy, right? It's going to ask you to type in the date. I don't want that. I want the date function. So in this particular case, we'll type in date and then open close parentheses. And that'll make D the current date. And then these are all the same because that's the same for every field. Okay? See how that works? If you guys want to learn more about date and time functions and stuff like that, I have a two-part series in my expert series of classes, expert 27 and 28. I cover lots of different stuff with dates and times. And if you really want to get in there, I've got a date time seminar where I cover lots and lots more. So head on over to my website if you want to learn more about dates and times. This is your fast tip for today, and I hope you learned something. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted. So if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access, too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout-out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1, and it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.